Should you use Carpenter to manage your cluster auto-scaling needs? Let's get into it. So Kubernetes takes the guesswork out of sizing your workloads with a handy capability, auto-scaling. But there's many dimensions to auto-scaling, so let's do a very quick recap. So let's say I have a Kubernetes cluster, but we're gonna zoom in uh, to the worker node, and we're gonna say very simply, we have some pods, they're gonna be the same type of pods, the same kind of containers running in them, um, and they're running in my worker node. So uh, horizontal pod autoscaler is built into Kubernetes, and it uses metrics like CPU usage, memory usage, or custom metrics that you can write to decide when to spin up or down additional pods. So let's say my app is receiving traffic, and HPA, horizontal pod autoscaler, indicates that I need to scale it up. So we'll spin up, you know, let's say an additional pod. Now, vertical pod autoscaler is similar. It can be installed into your cluster and manages the resource allocation, like CPU usage or memory usage of the pods. Uh, so that's kind of vertical scaling, making them larger. But what about when there's not enough capacity to schedule any more pods in the node? Well, that's when we would need an additional node. Uh, so that would look something like this. So we have a pod that needs to be scheduled, but we don't know where to put it. So I could call the AWS API, spin up an additional EC2 node, get it added to my cluster, or if I'm using managed node groups, I can use the EKS managed node group API, bump up the desired size to say, hey, I want another node. Uh, but an easier approach would be to use a cluster autoscaler. Now, there's a mature open source solution out here simply called Cluster Autoscaler, or CAS, but today we're gonna highlight Carpenter, an open source compute provisioning and management solution, which also helps with autoscaling our cluster. Now, one key difference between CAS and Carpenter, uh, CAS was not built to handle the hundreds of different combinations of node types, zones, uh, and purchase options available today on AWS. Carpenter is. Notably, CAS is different as it works directly with managed node groups or self-managed nodes in auto-scaling groups. Uh, these are AWS constructs to help you manage nodes. Let's say that CAS is installed on a node uh, in our cluster and managing one uh, managed node group. Um, and so we'll say uh, this one right here. So it's filling up uh, and we have an additional pod that needs to be uh, provisioned. So the cluster autoscaler tells the managed node group to bump up the number of uh, nodes. So it spins up another one and boom, my pod can now be scheduled. So I'm glad. So that's, that part is good, uh, my pod is scheduled, but this is not ideal. We didn't need such a big node, but we can solve this. Let's just create a different managed node group with a smaller instance type, okay? And now CAS recognizes that, spins up that, uh, that, that instance, and now I can provision it on a more appropriately sized node. Get rid of this one. Um, and that kind of solves our problem. But unfortunately, uh, you may end up with many node groups based on your requirements, which can be a challenge to manage, especially if you're trying to implement the EKS best practices for cost efficiency and high availability. Now Carpenter works differently. It doesn't use managed node groups or auto-scaling groups. It manages each node directly. Now, here's how it works. We'll take a slightly more complex example on this side. Let's say we have a number of different uh, pods in this cluster, and they're different sizes. So we got a big one, slightly smaller one, and an even smaller one. Now, let's say that HPA says we need more of this green, you know, smaller pod. So uh, we'll spin this up. Carpenter will more intelligently pick the right instance type for uh, that workload. And it'll do the same thing even if I need to spin up a larger pod, I'll pick the right instance type. Now, broadly, you can clearly see the advantage of using Carpenter. It can handle the complete flexibility of a cloud, meaning picking exactly the right type of node for your workload. For example, if you're using spot, uh, spot instances, if spot capacity is unavailable, it means it can retry much more quickly. Not only is it faster, but it's also easier to have intelligent and dynamic compute that's following all of the best practices without the operational overhead of managing it yourself. By the way, you might be wondering how to control how Carpenter operates. There's actually many dimensions of control here. You can set constraints on Carpenter to limit the instance type uh, types that it's able to use. You can set up taints to isolate workloads to specific types of nodes. 
Uh, with multiple provisioners and layered constraints, multiple teams can work within a cluster, uh, isolating nodes for things like billing, or maybe you want a specific team to have access to GPU-based instances. Now, Carpenter does a lot of things to help you save costs, and workload consolidation is one of these, and it's a fairly new feature. Now, I'm gonna sketch out here three nodes, uh, and this is just my way of measuring uh, how much they're being utilized. Let's say in these nodes, I have different pods that are running, and you know the first two nodes, let's say they're pretty well utilized. Um, but my last node here is only being uh, utilized, uh, let's say 20%. Now, Carpenters, uh, when you have workload consolidation enabled, it's gonna realize this and say, look, we can actually move this around and get rid of this node. Uh, this can lead to cost savings. So basically, when you have workload consolidation enabled, Carpenter will check to see that these pods can be consolidated into fewer nodes. It'll gracefully cordon the node, drain the pods, and then terminate the instances you don't need. This, of course, leads to lower costs. By the way, Carpenter also makes it easier to use Spot and Graviton instances. This can also lead to lower costs. Lastly, there's a pretty cool feature here to keep your nodes always up to date. By using this parameter, you can actually tell Carpenter to terminate nodes after a set amount of time. Then they'll automatically be replaced with newer nodes running the latest AMIs or Amazon machine images. To summarize, Carpenter helps you lower costs, improve application availability, and lower your operational overhead. To learn about best practices with Carpenter, such as running Carpenter and Fargate, be sure to check out some of the resources in the description below. Was this video helpful? Drop us a comment. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more episodes like this in the future.